So I've got two materials here, two solutions. One of them contains 1,6-hexane diamine. Let's switch these over here. There we go. So uh, one of these solutions here contains 1,6-hexane diamine dissolved in water, and one of them contains uh, the dicarboxylic acid, adipic acid dissolved in hexane. I'm just going to put the diamine in a beaker here. It might be a little easier to see. And since it's an amine, it is basic. So I'm going to add a little phenolphthalein to this to help us see what's going on. One drop of phenolphthalein and we get a pink color. Great. Now, to this mixture, I'm going to add my uh, adipic acid, which is actually dissolved in hexane. Uh, and hexane and water do not mix. So if I pour these together carefully, what you will probably see is the formation of two layers. Pour them together fairly slowly. So you see the formation of two layers in our beaker. And it may not be immediately obvious there, but if you look at the interface, what do you see? A membrane. There's a membrane there. You've got to remember, one of these layers contains one of the monomers used for the polymerization to make nylon. The other layer contains uh, the other monomer. The only place they can polymerize is at the interface between the two. Well, if I remove that interface, if I pull that material out from the interface, then new material comes into contact with one another. Let me get rid of that bubble there. That's not what I want new material comes into contact. And as long as I keep removing that layer in between, I can keep pulling out. If I go a little slower here, I won't quite break my bond, break my strand. I can keep pulling out nylon strands. Now we've got a good strand formation going. And I can keep pulling. As long as I keep removing the interface, I can keep pulling out nylon. There's an example of condensation polymerization. That was really good. I could pull out a pair of pantyhose. This is nylon. So we've now got nylon fibers that we have formed through the condensation of those two monomers. Uh, now, if I wasn't quite so gentle, if I, instead of pulling it out nicely, just kind of stirred this mixture up, breaking the interface between the two, what I'm left with is more of a blob, a tangled knot of nylon fibers, oops, tangled knot of nylon fibers. Oh, shoot it all over me here from my reaction. So there we have our nylon polymer produced through a condensation polymerization. Let's get some more of this stuff here from the from the earlier classes, if anybody wants to come down and check it out, you know, and see what it's like. It is not as strong as the nylon that you have making up your clothing because it was not uh, uh, produced in quite the same way. You know, scientists are not, you know, in factories pulling nylon out of beakers. It's usually done through an injection mechanism where the materials are mixed in and they're ejected out a very small opening, uh, typically called a spinneret, which lines up the fibers and produces a thread 
which is then wound onto a spool and uh, large quantities of nylon can be produced. So there's our, there's our condensation polymerization.